Okay, kapatid nga. And I'm Denise Garcia. We're going to discuss week 5 of the Digital Scholar. This week, we'll be focusing on the relationship between teaching, which is the last of Ernest Boyer's scholarly activities, and digital scholarship. So, let's start. This week, we will be discussing the economics of scarcity and abundance in relation to the availability of resources. The different possible pedagogies will also be discussed and how the scarcity of resources affect them. Lastly, the advent of MOOCs will be discussed as well and how they have evolved over time. Let's start by reviewing the concept of long tail. The concept of long tail was first coined by Chris Anderson in his blog and then book The Long Tail. This concept involves the study of a number of niche disciplines that through the power of sheer number can rival that of the mainstream disciplines. Students as well as researchers can learn about niche subjects in their free time when they are not researching or studying their main discipline. Because of this, these niche studies and niche disciplines can rival that of the mainstream ones. In economics, there is a concept of scarcity. This concept involves the supply of goods. Scarcity of goods dictate their price in the market as well as their demand. In the field of scholarship, this refers to scarcity of information. Before, research and learning was done with whatever information was at hand. However, due to the advent of digital scholarship, information scarcity disappeared. This is because information became more available to people with its shift to a digital format. Information and content for different scholastical purposes became free and abundant, mostly in part due to access open journals. There also was a varied amount of content available available for various disciplines. Because of the digital format of these information content, the sharing of these resources with others became easy as well as costless. However, there are some that seek to establish the traditional economic model by placing DRMs or digital rights management over some digital resources. Examples of these can be seen in subscriber-based digital content such as Spotify for music and Netflix for video entertainment. Trying to skip over these DRMs would usually result in legal actions. In the field of education, the model has to be changed to one of the math goal. This means that learners need to study niche subjects of their liking as well. This relates well to the long tail model of Anderson. Because of this, the new technologies are needed in realizing this goal for education. Due to this pedagogy of abundance of information, some assumptions can be made. Content is free, meaning they cost less. It's not always free, but it costs less. Content is abundant, and there is a varied amount of content. These types of content can be clearly seen in open access journals, wherein they are free and they vary according to discipline. There is ease of sharing, meaning that it is easier to share among peers and colleagues, which makes this pedagogy of abundance of information more socially based. Connections are light, meaning that e it is easier to make connections and network among others. There is cheap organization. This means that when discussing certain resources or content, there is no need to have a physical gathering. You could gather online and this would usually be cheaper and cost even nothing to do based on a generative system. Being based on a generative system means that there is innovation at work. And with that innovation comes user-generated content, means that there are original content being churned out by those that, are, that research using this pedagogy of abundance. Now we examine the implications of abundance with some existing pedagogies. First off is resource-based learning. As the name implies, the user learns based on the abundance of resources and the user's interaction with them. Some examples are interactive media and specially designed learning materials. 
as response to the abundance, the emphasis now is more on the selection, aggregation, and interpretation of existing materials. Another pedagogy is problem-based learning. Here, learning is based on the process one takes to reach a resolution and solve a problem. The students are given an open-ended problem and they work in small collaborative groups. While the teacher acts as a facilitator, the teacher could also help the students if they get stuck and could also give advice and resources. With the abundance of content, the stress now is on the finding and evaluating a wide range of resources and using social networks as resources as well. Another pedagogy is constructivism. Here, groups become discursive and reflective, having individuals creating their own interpretations. The students create their own knowledge, while the educator having less of a teacher role and more of a facilitator role. The danger here is the proliferation of conspiracy theories, since everyone has the ability to publish content. Hence, the ability to create accurate knowledge from a range of sources is even more relevant. Aside from the existing pedagogies, we also have communities of practice and connectivism as proposals for pedagogy of abundance. In communities of practice, it shows the social role in learning. It introduced the term, the concept, legitimate peripheral participation. Here, the members engage in tasks from the periphery to the part of the community. An example of this is free open source software communities. Another learning strategy proposed is connectivism. This is based on the usage of internet and the mass connections we establish. It emphasizes on the significance of network and connection to learning. Using the principles of connectivism and openness, MOOCs or massive open online courses became possible. The MOOCs were characterized on open education and the importance of networking. Before, it was associated with individuals. Now, MOOCs are institutional where universities offer courses on their platforms. New MOOCs focus on video instruction and automatic assessment. Some examples of MOOCs now are edX, Udacity, Coursera, Iversity, Open to Study, and Model. To summarize, digital scholarship has influenced the way we learn as well as teach. The shift to a digital platform for information has allowed a wide variety and abundance of information to become available for all. This has helped diminish the scarcity of information. With this, there is a pedagogy of abundance that enables several pedagogical approaches to be available. This abundance of information on the digital landscape has allowed collaboration without geographical barriers. Because of all this, more content is generated and innovation is allowed to thrive.